are watching West Harper Community yeah. Television. You're watching West Harper Community Television. You're watching West Harper Community Television. For the community, by the community. Hello and welcome to Art Talks, a community TV show presenting art, artists, and discussions about creativity. I'm Joanne Bauer, your host of Art Talks, and I'm thrilled today to have three artists with me who will be participating in Open Studio Hartford, which is a citywide event coming up in November. So let me introduce my guests. First, we have Kathy Packer, and next to her is Greg Garcia and Nina Salazar. They've brought their art, as you can see, very colorful and diverse pieces that we will talk about, and we'll also talk about Open Studio Hartford. Before we do get into talking with the artists, I want to make sure to mention the website. The website is openstudiohartford.com. It's a very easy one to remember, and anything that we neglect to say, you can certainly find for yourselves on that website openstudiohartford.com. I'm going to start with you and Kathy because I know that you go back a ways. This is a, an event that started in 1989 in Hartford. So some of our audience will have heard of it and maybe they've even participated and been in attendance. But you remember some things about the early days. Do you want to briefly tell us a bit? Um, well, uh, I think my, my participation began in either the first or second um, open studio when it, it uh, took place in the um, Colt building. In the Colt building. And um, uh, Cynthia uh, had managed to, to uh, uh, have the landlord loan or, or give free space for this. And it was a huge, huge uh, um, wing of, of the floor. I forget what floor it was on in, in the building. Right, and, and that, if I could just say, that was back when many, many artists lived in the Colt building right, on the Colt right. campus. It was, yeah. And you mentioned Cynthia. I just want to also identify Cynthia Bulong, who is mm -hmm. the events coordinator for Open Studio Weekend. She was involved, Open Studio Hartford, she was involved very much near the beginning, mm -hmm. and then the last two or three years, she's Correct. really punching it up to a new level. Right, and so when she, when she was uh, in charge of it, um, uh, it, it was open to everyone, of course, like it is now, but it, there, most of the artists were either from the, the building or in the Hartford region, and um, it was loosely organized, but it was uh, many floors that were open, uh, including this big hall, and then um, when the hall wasn't available, then and, and even when it was, Cynthia would always open up her, her space, her studio. Right. Uh, so I participated a couple of years after that, and then there was a big gap. And then I've been involved in the last three years. And what impresses me, I think, is that from the beginning, it's probably been a very collaborative effort of artists. Mm -hmm. And now, at this point, there's actually a nonprofit board that runs, uh, that coordinates the, the event and provides for other workshops around Hartford, and that's called ART Art, Artists in Real Time. So since about 2003, it's been much more stabilized. As you're saying, I think in the beginning, it, it was much more informal, of course, as these things are when they start. How would you say that your art has changed since, since those days? Oh, um, a great deal. Uh, in, <laughs> in some respects, I, I used to, uh, or up until the last four years, I, I uh, painted um, the figure in some capacity. Oh. And then in, um, probably in the, around 2000, I started including 
um, the environment, my concerns had shifted from, from uh, the figure to issues with the environment. And uh, so I was including landscape with uh, uh, still life and, and animals. And, and uh, they were, uh, some of it, they were props really for, to create this uh, kind of environment that, uh, in, in the paintings that would uh, speak to, the, to what I was concerned about. And I know that you have very profound concerns about our environment. Would you like to say a few specific words about this piece or this piece? The, you've brought mm -hmm. these two colorful pieces in today. Well, the last, sure. The last four years I've been, um, uh, well, I should say five years ago, I, I had a wonderful trip to Africa. And it, it, it did change my um, perspective on uh, what I had been doing. And, and I uh, spent couple, about three years just drawing and painting. And it, it, and, it, and it turned out it was the zebra I was most interested in as a meta metaphor for um, the vulnerability and, and the beauty and the strength of, of the wildlife. And, um, and so this, this, the, this body of work that, that I'm showing, um, uh, it sort of crept up on me. I, I, mm. don't, I don't work from uh, a, uh, a concept and fit the paintings into it. The concept reveals itself to me as I'm, I'm working. And so for the last year, um, I kept, water just kept coming into the, the paintings. And then uh, I started uh, reading a little bit more about what I had seen when I was in Kenya and Tenzin, Tanzania. And I, I didn't realize that that was the beginning in 2008 of a very serious drought, mm -hmm. and, uh, which had, has uh, just subsided a little bit uh, today. But um, so, so the issue of water, the presence of water, the great migration, uh, which is all about finding water and food, and um, and how it has impacted wildlife, and uh, as, as, and especially the migrating herds, which zebra and wildebeest are. Mm -hmm. So, so these p paintings, um, it just happened. I had seen a uh, an image of a dried riverbed, and there was a fish stuck in the in that dried up with the brick of mm -hmm. uh, uh, soil, and. So I, I just, you know, and then it just sort of speaks to me that what, what could I create from that with, well, how do I talk about the zebra hunting for water? And so in this, mm. this case, I it just mm -hmm. imagined that he got stuck. And, um, and then I had, um, in, in many of the places in, in uh, Africa, uh, it, it, this is affecting the population as well. So uh, their only uh, sources of water are, are miles and miles, hours of walking away. Oh, yeah. So uh, they, they have uh, transported in these water containers. And I had seen uh, when I was there, they stick everything in, in these barren trees. And I wanted to, to you know, I was exploring the, the, uh, so many of the uh, photos I took and the videos of zebras uh, or animals that are seeking shelter uh, from the sun under a barren tree. And this one I, I um, sort of collaged in my head the idea of putting these water containers in that tree. And, and I ask the question a lot of times when I'm working, what if, what if this was the only source for this animal and you'd never, you know, the, prob uh, the possibility of a, of a zebra's drinking out of a container Okay, maybe, but but it, it's not likely. It's just you know so that um, it, it it's part of of uh, um, talking about opposites and paradox and um, and and the, one, the last thing I wanted to just say is that the um, uh, the the way I put on paint and the way um, I work with paint has uh, been pretty consistent over the years. Sometimes it's been a little tighter. Uh, recently, I've been uh, a little, a little less concerned about about um, uh, the, the the kind of uh, or, or creating a tight edge and just sort of loosening up the work some more, and um, and but but the paint is that's you know I've been talking about the concept but the pro process is mm -hmm. is the most important part for me is is enjoying putting on paint and playing with mm -hmm. uh, space and light and uh, and color. You have given us lots to think about, mm -hmm. lots of insights into your process and to your con, the conceptual aspect of it. When, when folks 
come to your studio during Open Studio Weekend, what might they see? Will you be in process of painting? Will you be available to discuss pieces? How does that work? Um, well, everyone does, does it differently in their studios. I've tended to clean up a little. <laughs> <laughs> and um, so uh, I'm not usually painting. I'm, I'm, uh, I, I, I find that most people that come in, and I'm at 56 Arbor Street, uh, which is one of the venues um, that we're, we're uh, representing. And, um, and most people come in, they want to talk about the work. Mm -hmm. and, so, and then I usually have a lot of the, the uh, uh, process already out there. I don't clean up that much. I oh. clean up the floor. Uh -huh. <laughs> and uh, so they, they can, they, they, I love that part of it. You know, I don't put everything away. They can come over mm -hmm. and they look. They say, you know, oh, you use oils and what, what's this, what's that? You know, I work from a lot of my own, uh, well, pretty much my own uh, photography. Sometimes, you know, other, other pieces creep from the internet creep in. But um, they, can, they come in, and, and uh, in my particular studio, I have about a 25-foot wall uh, where I hang work. I sh I'm now creating a, a uh, process wall where uh, the sources, my uh, sketches, thoughts, uh, my writings will be on that wall. Uh, and I have, you know, I do that informally, but for this particular um, open studio, I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep adding to that wall. And, uh, and maybe my puppy, if he's, if he <laughs> so behaves, might be there. If he and, behaves. And you know what else? We should mention that there's oftentimes food in the studios too. <laughs> yes, yeah, yeah. We all, you know, we all usually have um, uh, some kind of a spread. There's wine and, yeah, and right. cheese. And, That's a big and cookies draw for me. <laughs> lots, of, lots of children come through. Which now, is great. I, I want to make sure that I say that there will be over 20 venues this year, and this will be throughout Hartford, so many uh, different areas that there, there will be shuttle buses available, too, for the attendees, and they can, hopefully, they'll be getting a bus. They could get a bus every 20 minutes. The bus will be looping around. I know, Greg, you've been involved last year with the ekphrasis part of the performance art part of um, Open Studio would, how would you like to talk a little bit about that? And let's just imagine if you if you were going to be inspired by one of Kathy's or, or Nina's pieces, how, how does that work? Ekphrasis is the process of um, putting words to a piece of visual art. Uh, it's something that uh, started as a Greek tradition uh, with epic poetry. And um, there was a poem about a shield and I don't remember what it is, but um, everybody's got their own way of, of dealing with this process. And so for me, uh, I want to be hit by a painting or, or whatever the visual art is in a certain way. I want to personalize it and find a way to then sort of process it and make it universal again, but make it um, my own piece uh, so that when you see the visual art, and then you hear the piece that I have, that, that I've prepared, um, they, they find a way to connect with each other, but they're each their own pieces of art. Um, I find that the other thing I really need to do uh, is to respect the art. Um, I, I feel like it's, uh, it's my duty to respect the art and to, and to treat it uh, with care uh, in terms of what I say and how I uh, approach it. Um, because I revere all art, and so if I were to uh, to take one of these pieces, I would really uh, I would I would squint at it, and I would uh, pull it apart in my mind and and, and find my own piece of meaning. Uh, the way we do with any art, we find our own meaning. That's what art does. It it gives us it speaks to us in in, in different ways. And so find out where I'm going with it, and uh, and and then start to uh, uh, just write, just write and write and write and um, not think as much as possible, not, not think until after I've drafted something or at least drafted uh, some stanzas and then start to think and say, all right, what, am I, what have I done here? Um, because I, I try to avoid being too cerebral with any medium that I work with. Uh, I do some visual art. I'm more of a graphic artist than, uh, than a fine artist. I've done some pieces, um, some stencil work and some illustrative work with pen, but uh, 
and, and a lot of uh, poster work, these and, and other things like that. But um, when it comes to, uh, to writing, uh, that's where I, I, I think that what I want to avoid is being too cerebral right up front. Mm -hmm. And, and trying to think about what I'm what I want to write. Mm -hmm. So it would, have, uh, it would have more of an emotional. Or yeah. Would you say an emotional connection? Exactly, mm -hmm. from intuition to page, and then process it and make it actually work, <laughs> because there are rules that I that I don't want to break. But as a writer, um, I want to interrupt for just a moment and then sure. come back to the Ekphrasis to mention just how multi-talented you are. Mm. As you said, you've brought some of your graphic art with mm -hmm. you today, and my understanding is that you're a musician mm -hmm. and a composer and a poet and a painter and an educator. Anything I've missed that you want to reveal? <laughs> Yeah, I'm a father. You're a father. <laughs> I have a couple there of daughters. There they are. Well, Maya and Lila. touched Hello, all, Maya the, uh, all the good points. Uh, I wouldn't really call myself a painter. I paint, but uh, I, I, these are painters. Um, I am an amateur as far as that's concerned. I, I'd say as a musician, I've been uh, performing and writing for about 30 years, 20 some odd years. And uh, that's a strength. That's something that I love to do that I will do until I am not breathing. Um, and writing as well. And, and I write prose and poetry. And, and the funny thing is, outside of, of the circle of the, uh, these ekphrastic events and um, other poetry events that I attend regularly, uh, no one thinks of me as a poet. Those are the people who say, oh, you're the poet. And then I say, <laughs> wow, really, am I? But uh, I, write, I write prose, short stories, working on a novel. All writers say they're working on a novel. That's I'm working right. on a novel. You have to um, be. So coming back to the ekphrasis part Mm -hmm. of Open Studio, and that, let me just remind myself, that will be November 9th and 10th, I believe, that weekend is mm -hmm. Performance Art Weekend. Yeah. Last year, you wrote a poem, yeah. correct? And this year, you might write music. Right, Is that right. what you're thinking of? And are you paired up at this point with a visual artist, or, or not yet? No, no, I'm not. Um, I haven't really been... Uh, in contact about that. And I sort of trust that there are going to be enough excellent artists that um, uh, I'll find something, something good. Last year I was lucky enough to get Andres Chaparro, who's a, a brilliant and, and very um, sort of active kind of a painter. And so my piece was very lyrical. Uh, and I found that because you're going to perform the piece, that I wanted to do something more lyrical and more performance and, and rhythm oriented. And he's a jazz guy. Mm -hmm. So I really wanted a sort of find my way into that as well. Uh, and this year I was thinking about actually writing a song and doing that instead uh, because it, it, we're really trying to open things up. Uh, and Cynthia is spearheading that concept and, 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 and Lorna uh, of opening things up to um, not just be sort of, okay, here is, here is the visual art, here is the poem, next. Right. You know, sort of. uh, right, absolutely. I, I'm glad you mentioned that because it, the way, oftentimes, ekphrasis, the term is mentioned in relation mm -hmm. to visual art and poetry, mm -hmm. but the way it can be interpreted and the open studio folks are interpreting it to mean performance art or music as it's interacting and these, these arts are speaking to one another and creating echoes and overlays. And I think that's what's so exciting to yeah. me. I was at the event. I was a poet last year at the Ekphrasis event. And mm -hmm. And that space was rocking. It, yeah, it was, was just so there, there was palpable energy there throughout the whole time, and no one wanted to leave. You know, mm -hmm. it just even went, I don't know, at least 30 minutes over the scheduled time, yeah. and everyone was so energized. It, it was wonderful. Nina, would you please tell us some things about this wonderful piece behind you? Um, in the spring, there was um, an Angels in the Casa. Um, event and uh, I was asked to participate so this uh, gave me an opportunity to work with vellum in a way that I've been wanting to work with vellum and uh, an opportunity to kind of explore kind of seed ideas I had and commit so I <laughs> created um, this large-scale angel wing um, and so each piece is hand sculpted and cut out of vellum 
Are you kidding? No. I had no idea. No. I no. just want to mm. say that here in the studio, it looks so much like feathers. And so what you're telling me is you created each individual. Yes. So piece. I work with vellum a lot, and I actually do a lot of paper sculpting. Um, my background is fine arts and design. So I have a background in painting. I had a, a love affair with oils until I had children. And that got a little toxic. Um, oh. And then kind of, kind of moved to, um, you know, gouache and watercolor. And then I, um, about five years ago, uh, really, I, I'm very tactile and I love papers and I fell in love with India ink. And I love vellum. And um, I've been wanting to sculpt. I sculpt with different papers as well as doing illustrations and figurative pieces. But um, I've been wanting to do work with vellum. And it surprised me with how it... Um, reflects the light and has a sheen to it. Um, it sculpts very differently than I had anticipated, so it, it has its challenges, but the results are really beautiful. So um, it is so it is really beautiful. It's very elegant. And so vellum so, is the piece, the background piece too, and yes. then each of the individual feathery pieces yeah. are yeah. vellum. And I'm experimenting with other shapes and um, and ideas as well, with sculpting as well as, as using the vellum with, with India ink in more of a fine arts direction as well. Right. So how would you compare, how do you think about the likenesses and differences, the similarities and differences between this piece and that, either in the process, the end result, um, your concept? Well, I, I, conceptually, they're both very different, and they're both exploring very different um, ideas, very different... Um, just this is a, a definite series and a study of yes. um, of women and all the things that women do, all the common things that we all do in our private moments um, as we are exploring our bodies as they change or age, our you know skin quality, our uh, all those little things that we are always coming to terms with as as we change and. Uh, develop as as we as we age. Even even the young girls. It's funny. I had students who saw this is a, a series that um, this is one out of five, and um, I have other women, other models that are participating. And so it's an interview process. I do. Um, they sit for me, and I do different studies. They they get to t talk and discuss their own personal journeys of um, kind of just self love, self acceptance, um, just those little things. Um, so, and then I can capture that moment and, um, and so articulate that. So you're really that. interacting with your models. I yes. don't think that's very common in my experience. Maybe I'm mistaken. This but is specific mm -hmm. interaction. That's Where actually this, a strong mm -hmm. element. Um, mm -hmm. So in terms of the common, my, my common thing that I find that I, as an artist, even as a painter, and then the reason why I love the inks and the papers is, and the sculpting is because I, I love the playing with light and dark, mm -hmm. the the depth, um, and then reducing it down. So when I started with India ink, I started really studying and, and really fine-tuning my lines and my line quality and reducing it to the least amount of lines, actually. So when you really take a look, you see there's actually minimal lines to create the forms, um, even with the portraits I've done in the past. Um, and that, that translates into my paper sculpting, the playing with the vellum, because once again, I'm playing with light and shadow and, and that depth and, and the contrast or tension between them um, with, when creating forms. So um, that, I say, is the common, the most common thing is, is that. And I'm curious, I would think, I've never done, I've personally never done anything like that piece. Well, I've, I, I don't know, maybe not, maybe I have. <laughs> I've worked in <laughs> textures and collage, mm -hmm. but you are building something in a very different way from, yes. from this. Yeah. Is there anything more that you want to tell us about that process of building, sure. of creating? Um, well, with the vellum, what I discovered is, uh, depending on how the light is hitting it, uh, right now it's, it's, it feels very solid but there's actually just two thin layers. And if the light changes, which is, there's two reasons why I chose to put it on a crate. One was the juxtapose of the delicate um, wing on a more industrial crate that was found mm -hmm. in the trash. Um, and, uh, but when the light comes behind it, you can actually see every layer um, and it becomes translucent and you really can see each layer uh, and it doesn't take much with the vellum. Um, to create that. Um, when I sculpt with, uh, with paper, um, 
I, I have a couple of different series that, that I've kind of gotten involved in. Um, it's more of the play of the shadow, so I'll put pins behind it and I'll really play with that depth of field within a space. Um, some of my paper sculpting gets really teeny tiny and I'll put in found objects like lenses. So you have to actually be in the piece to take a look at the teeny tiny illustrations that are no bigger than the top of my thumb. That then you have to look through a lens to see in kind of a paperscaped textured um, world. And those are a little more illustrative. Um, I saw, I was in New York City and saw at the um, International Center of photography, mm -hmm. something that rem very much reminds me of, of what you're saying with pins and actually there were magnifying glasses that were almost a design element. Mm -hmm. we, we, this was all wall size piece. It was so inter inter intricate and and inviting and engaging. Yeah. And, and, I, and I love that. It. So I, I work small and, and intricate like these these sculpted pieces, which are painstaking. They, they do take a while because each one is then sculpted and, and folded and, and cut so it all works together. And then I do work larger and I do find myself working um, both at the same time. I need that mental release to open myself back up again That's to so really stand because these get pinned up on these large and I, I get to use these fantastic brushes and just really feel the line <laughs> as opposed to crouching over something. Oh, that's so cool. <laughs> so, so we have only the smallest amount of time left. Left. It went really fast mm -hmm. with three of you here, and thank you so much for coming in. I wanted to say a few words of thanks, and then anything else that you would like to say, either about your art, the process, or Open Studio Weekend. We have a few minutes, uh, well, one minute to do that. But I want to thank my artists. I want to thank certainly West Hartford Community TV, and thank our producer and our camera person, too. What else can we say that will be inviting to uh, guests? Um, well, actually, I am a new location this year. So it's my third year um, that I've participated, but I'll be um, at my studio as Studio N111 on Pratt Street. Um, I'm creating, um, actively, we, I teach classes through there and workshops. I hire other teaching artists. Um, I'll have three artists showing, and I'll also be having an ongoing workshop where um, every guest will get a mini canvas and they get to do a 10 minute mini and go home with a little Excellent. something and get to learn about my programming. Excellent. And I do want to say that the opening reception will be November 7th. It's a Thursday. It starts with a cocktail reception. It's free and open to everyone. The following weekend will be performance art and then the weekend after that will be open studio all around Hartford and Greater Hartford. Greg, anything else that you'd like to say about Ekphrasis? Um, well, not specifically. I, mm -hmm. I did want to say that um, I've, uh, I lived in the cult building in the 90s. I lived in art space in, in the early aughts. And um, it has never been uh, such an amazingly huge event as it is now. Uh, last year was spectacular. There were so many people at all the venues that I went to. And this year is going to be even bigger. It's just going to be huge. And people really... Um, will be amazed at, at the, the quality and the level uh, of, of craftsmanship in the arts and crafts because there's all kinds of things there. Any medium you can think of, they're exploiting it and uh, it, it's just brilliant. That's right. And it's, and it's a wonderful time to, to buy art, to buy original art, to buy mm -hmm. gifts for the holidays. It's just really so exciting a, a, a time to, to spend money and <laughs> see all this, this creativity in our region. Thank you so much.